Thanks for joining me for this week's Reef Health Update. So today we're releasing the 2024-2025 Reef Summer Snapshot. That's been developed in collaboration with the Australian Institute of Marine Science and the CSIRO. So over the summer months, the reef was affected by elevated sea surface temperatures, as well as flood plumes and crown of thorn starfish outbreaks. And this built upon the stress that we accumulated last summer. So our aerial and in-water surveys were actually um, revealed widespread coral bleaching, primarily in the far northern and northern areas of the marine park, with the patterns of coral bleaching being consistent where the heat stress was uh, most significant. So primarily in the inshore more so than the outer shelf areas. We also saw the flood plume activity generate some impacts on the Great Barrier Fin through including some coral bleaching and some mortality, particularly in the inshore areas of the northern and central sections of the Great Barrier Fin Marine Park. Tropical Cyclone Alfred, along with the, um, the low pressure system in February, brought some cooling to the Great Barrier Reef. But Tropical Cyclone Alfred may have generated some impacts upon the outermost reefs of the southern part of the marine park. Overall, we're bringing together all of this information and what we understand about it so, from it so far in the Reef Summer Snapshot. And that also builds upon our understanding of Crown of Thorn Starfish activities, which is collected by the Crown of Thorn Starfish Control Program. Their work is currently concentrated in the southern end of the marine park and also in the far northern area where the concentrations of Crown of Thorn Starfish are highest. So overall, this pattern of uh, impacts for this year builds upon the patterns of the, the global pattern of coral bleaching that we've seen over the past couple of years, the fourth global coral bleaching event, which has currently affected more than 80 countries worldwide. And has also affected other reefs in Australia, including Ningaloo Reef earlier this summer. So we provide this information both so we can communicate what's going on as well as so that we can actually target our management actions and that's what we're currently doing. This concludes the series of weekly, weekly reef health updates that we provide, but rest assured we will we'll continue to provide updates as information becomes available. In the meantime, if you're going out to visit this amazing place that is the Great Barrier Reef over the Easter break, then please make sure that you know what the rules are of what you can do and where you can and can't do them so that we can look after this precious resource for future generations. Thanks for your attention.